and it was an aeroplane that struck the Pentagon. That's totally impossible that an aeroplane struck the Pentagon. A commercial aeroplane has a very soft nose. There's, there's, you don't have a nose of titanium and steel. That's not what an aeroplane could fly with. If you tried, if you tried taking off with that, it would nose dive immediately. It's lifted off the airport if it had such a heavy nose. The nose of a commercial aircraft is very soft. It's just a little aluminum uh, covering, aluminium uh, covering uh, the radar of the plane, which is usually up in the nose. The nose is very soft. Whatever hit the Pentagon went through six, punched its way through six of the ten 18 inch stone walls between outside the Pentagon and its inner courtyard. There are five rings of buildings, each with an outer and an inner wall, and whatever hit the Pentagon went through six of those ten walls before it came to a stop. The photographs are there, the evidence is there, as clear as clear can be. The, uh, the newspapers, of course, did not publish those photographs, but they do exist. Then, it can only have been a guided missile which struck the Pentagon. It can only be. Guided missiles have a tough uh, nose, titanic, titanium and steel, with an explosive charge of two charges. One charge to penetrate the wall which, have, which it, well, that they're penetrating, and then the second charge to explode inside and that's exactly what the photographs show, with a fire running up and down inside the, the outer ring of the Pentagon. So we were all of us told, and I hope none of you still believe, that it was the work of three commercial airliners pirate, uh, piloted by 19 Mohammedans, uh, who of whom, as you may well know, seven are at least are known to be alive and walking around. Lies, lies, lies. At the moment, the whole world is being told lies by these media, by the government, by the politicians, by the universities, by the teachers, and worst of all, alas, by the cardinals and the highest authorities in the church. By the cardinals and the highest authorities in the church. At any point during this day, were you just, in a very base way, afraid? Uh, there was, uh, there were many times, uh, Miles, that uh, you were afraid. You were, um, you were worried, uh, especially when I was uh, standing in front of the Pentagon that night, seeing one of our uh, fortresses pried open by a missile, an airplane. Uh, thinking about uh, the number of people that probably died on the plane and on the ground. It was Bob Franken with an eyewitness who said it appeared that that Boeing 757, the American jet, American Airlines jet, landed short of the Pentagon. Can you give us any better idea of how much of the plane actually impacted the building? You know, it, it, it might have appeared that way, but from my close-up inspection, uh, there's no evidence of a plane having crashed anywhere near the Pentagon. The only site uh, is the actual uh, site of the building that's crashed in, and as I said, the only pieces left uh, that you can see are, are small enough that you could pick up in your hand. Uh, there are no large uh, tail sections, wing sections, uh, a fuselage, nothing like that anywhere around, which would indicate that the entire plane crashed into the side of the Pentagon uh, and then caused the side to collapse. Now, even though if you look at the pictures of the Pentagon, you see uh, that the floors have all collapsed. That didn't happen immediately. Uh, it wasn't until almost about 45 minutes later uh, that...
down at the computer. I put my son's stroller right beside me. As soon as I went to turn on the computer, boom. A massive explosion. That's it. And this was the plane hitting the Pentagon. To me, it sounded like a bomb. It sounded like a bomb. It sounded like a bomb. We're looking at an aerial view of the Pentagon. Mick, can you talk to us? Uh, officially, nobody knows exactly what happened. I think the picture is pretty clear. According to one U.S. Army officer who went running past me at a full trot, he said that uh, it appears that a bomb was detonated uh, at the heliport. Yesterday, after conferring with my senior national security advisors and following extensive consultations with our coalition partners, Saddam Hussein was given one last chance, set forth in very explicit terms to do what he should have done more than six months ago, withdraw from Kuwait without condition or further delay and comply fully with the resolutions passed by the United Nations Security Council. Regrettably, the noon deadline passed without the agreement of the government of Iraq to meet demands of United Nations Security Council Resolution 660 as set forth in the specific terms spelled out by the coalition to withdraw unconditionally from Kuwait. To the contrary, what we have seen is a redoubling of Saddam Hussein's efforts to destroy completely Kuwait and its people. I have therefore directed General Norman Schwarzkopf in conjunction with coalition forces Others are very relieved that we're now fighting back. The fact is the war started the day Saddam Hussein marched into Kuwait, has treated those people brutally, brutally, and so far they've had no one to fight back for them. Now they know we are fighting back in no uncertain way with the best, most professional armed forces the world over. And the way in which they have to do it, to take out all of those military targets and communications, 